Welcome to day 15 of our Lenten journey. So take a quick look out your window or outside anyway. Is the sun shining as you participate in our devotion today? It is as I prepare for it. Actually, that was a trick question. The sun is shining as you watch this, even if you are doing so at night, or even if the clouds are blocking your view of it. Sometimes I think we get a little too caught up in our own perspective of things. It's human and natural enough, certainly, but it doesn't always serve us well. God is present with us, always, but being God, he is also present with neighbors, friends, family, colleagues, co-workers, even the strangers you may encounter on your day in this Lenten journey. And now the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, the love of Christ that guards our hearts and minds, and the joy and consolation of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, O God, to prepare a pathway for your Christ. I is coming, speak peace to your people, and turn our hearts toward you, that your saving grace and splendid glory may dwell in all the earth, through Jesus Christ, whose day draws near. Amen. Our reading for this 15th day of our Lenten journey is from the third chapter of Revelation. To the angel of the church in Sardis write, These are the words of him who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works. You have a name of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up and strengthen what remains and is on the point of death. For I have not found your works perfect in the sight of my God. Remember then what you received and heard. Obey it and repent. If you do not wake up, I will come like a thief. And you will not know at what hour I will come to you. Yet you still have a few persons in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me, dressed in white, for they are worthy. If you conquer, you will be clothed like them in white robes, and I will not blot your name from the book of life. I will confess your name before my Father before his angels. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Here ends our reading. Sardis was the capital of the kingdom of Lydia. Among other things, it was known for being captured not just once, but twice by foreign invaders. There was no reason it should ever have been lost. It was a wealthy, well-fortified city. It had an excellent system of protections, warnings, and responses to potential danger. The people were aware of the threats that were around them, and had taken precautions and 
made plans. The problem was, as we have been reminded time and again on this Lenten journey, was that people weren't alert. They had allowed themselves to get a little too comfortable. Or maybe they had become so focused on smaller events and demands that they forgot to take care of important things, like safeguarding the people of the city. It is so easy to do this, isn't it? We get swept up in today's events, the things we have to accomplish before we go to bed in the evening. Oh, many of those things won't matter a fig leaf a year to come. But for now, they consume a huge amount of our time and attention. Is this really how God expects you to invest your time, your energy, if so, if in prayer and reflection you do believe this is God's plan for you, well, then blessings upon you, good for you. If not, if that work is something you will get to any day now, well, Maybe Lent can be a time for you to pause from the daily rush and reflect on what God created you, uniquely created you, to do and to be. be with you. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord, who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation, 
for the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness. For the gifts of relationship with others. For the communion of faith in your church. I invite you to add your own thanksgivings at this time. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world, heal the hurts of all your children, and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially we pray for those who govern nations of the world, for the people in countries ravaged by strife or warfare, for all who work for peace and international harmony, for all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction, the Church of Jesus Christ in every land. Again, I invite you to list other prayer requests or needs at this time. your wide embrace, O God, we place all our prayers, spoken and unspoken, trusting that you will receive them into your heart of mercy, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now the God of hope, fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, through Christ Jesus, for whom we wait. Amen. Blessings to you this day.